Hello and welcome to another video by Haste Computer Repair. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X270 laptop for use in 2024 and onward. And this version of the X270 features a Intel Core i5-7300U CPU with two cores and four threads. And that includes Intel HD Graphics 620. Right now we have eight gigabytes of DDR4 2133 megahertz Samsung branded RAM. And that is a 1366 by 768 HD display, 12.5 inches in size. And we have Intel dual band wireless AC 8265 Wi-Fi with Bluetooth 4.1. And we have the typical keyboard of this generation of ThinkPads with the chiclet style keys. I don't mind it at all. Of course, we have the characteristic red touch point right here and the three point touch on the touchpad, which is actually quite responsive and nice to the feel. And we have a fingerprint reader right here. The keyboard has a two tier backlit system, the usual 720p webcam, for I.O. here on the right side of the laptop, we have headphone and microphone input, USB 3.1 always on, a SIM card reader, an SD card reader, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the version of the Kensington lock. On the left side, we have the optional smart card reader, USB 3.1, HDMI port, USB Type-C, and the rectangle style power adapter port. There's some ventilation for the CPU fan. On the bottom of the laptop, here's the port for the docking bay. Lots of grills for passive air cooling and air intake for the CPU fan right over here. For the external battery, that is a three cell, 23 watt lithium ion battery. The bottom material is glass fiber reinforced plastic and the top are made of glass fiber reinforced plastic. So before we open this thing up and take a look inside, we need to disable the built-in battery and one way to do this is to turn on the laptop, start hitting enter until you're greeted with this menu, in which case we can press F1 to enter system BIOS. Apologies for the flashing screen. Once in system BIOS, you can navigate over to config down to power and we can go down to disable built-in battery, press enter and of course we want to press yes. Now that we're ready to open this thing up, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver. But first, we'll start by removing the external battery. Now using your Phillips head screwdriver, you can remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. Now using something like a thin, flat guitar pick, you can score around the palm rest and remove the back panel. So this, like many other ThinkPads, is easily accessible for system maintenance. So here we have the lithium ion three cell battery that we deactivated in BIOS. Just note that you can also disconnect it from the motherboard here if you forgot to disable it or if you plan to do something like replace the touchpad, in which case you will need to remove the battery in order to access it. So here we have our one single RAM slot. So unfortunately, there's no soldered RAM on this motherboard. We are limited to single channel RAM. It would be nice to install a 16 gigabyte RAM stick, but right now all I have are eight gigabyte sticks. Over here, we have the 2.5 inch hard drive or solid state drive caddy. There's also a NVMe adapter, which I'll show you. To access the caddy, you just need to remove this one screw and gently lift the caddy up because these cable connections to the motherboard are known to come loose and break off and that's just a can of worms you don't want to mess with. Here in this particular version we have an NVMe SSD adapter which is kind of nice and allegedly this will give you a added speed boost of PCIe 3.0 times 2 16 gigabits per second as opposed to the 6.0 gigabits per second with the 2.5 inch solid state drive option. And over here we have the ribbon cable connection to the fingerprint reader and over here if you wanted to apply new thermal face to your CPU. You just have to remove these four screws and that'll lift up the heat pipe and the CPU fan. Don't forget that there is a small little ribbon cable connection powering the CPU fan and you don't want to rip that off when removing it for maintenance. Over here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And here's the WWAN port that can also house something like this M.2 SSD. So that does bring about the option for dual boot, uh, extra storage, or a system boot drive if that's something you'd like to do. Just note that this is a M.2 SATA 3 SSD, not an NVMe SSD. Over here we have our little speakers. 
Now, despite the X270's limitations, I do appreciate how Lenovo made everything very accessible in case you need to replace or swap anything out. So the X270 is great for general use, and it's something that I could imagine using every day for work as a daily driver if I needed to. The size makes it easy to pack up and put in a backpack or a laptop case, and also convenient for travel. Now, you're not going to be doing any heavy video editing or photo editing or gaming on this laptop tough, but that's not really what it's designed for. It's just kind of a general purpose work laptop, but you could still use something like Movavi video editor and get by with editing up to 1080p video. And it wouldn't be that bad if you're just looking to cut and splice something together. You can of course watch a plethora of high definition video on YouTube and other streaming services. As long as your internet connection is stable and fast, you'll be looking up many, many pictures for reference. I'll give you an example of what the speakers sound like. You may want to connect a Bluetooth speaker or connect some headphones if you want some better quality sound. For Fortnite, we have the resolution set to 1280 by 720 in a window display with VSync activated. Uh, I don't think we're gonna plan for over 60 frames per second, and we're using performance lower graphical fidelity instead of DirectX 11. Let's see how well this performs. All right, so just loading into the map, we're sitting at about uh, 40 frames per second on average, 45, dipping down pretty low. The lowest is nine frames per second, but I mean, the world's still loading, so let's go find some weapons and see what happens when we encounter somebody. All right, I feel like I got lucky there. So it's playable. Uh, we're looking at a high of 44 frames per second so far in the match. And when I was running around this house and going towards where these two guys were shooting each other, um, it actually wasn't that bad. If there was any stuttering, it was minimal. I was still able to get to where I needed to go. Of course, you're not going to be competitive playing this way, but you know, playable in a pinch. All right, so I've loaded up Dead by Daylight and I kept graphics quality at low. I set the resolution way down to 640 by 400, which makes it look terrible. But what I'm going for is at least 30 frames per second in performance uh, just to make this game playable. I also turned on FSR, see if that makes a difference. Here we go. Okay, so we're definitely below 30 frames per second, but what I'm going for is just smooth enough to play. And you know what, that actually doesn't look that bad. All right, so throwing things like flash bombs and stuff will cause a little bit of stuttering, but otherwise, you know, it's playable. So being limited to only eight gigabytes of RAM really puts a damper on a lot of gaming experience with those last two titles. So I decided to load something up that will have absolutely no problem running on the system, just to demonstrate that yes, you can still game on an X270. And that game in question is Star Wars Dark Forces. This game came out quite a while ago, um, I'd almost call it like mid-retro gaming at this point. Uh, but as you can see, not a problem playing this game. Yes, it's a little bit pixelated, but you know what? The game's still pretty awesome. So would I recommend the ThinkPad X270 for use in 2024 and onward? Absolutely. Especially if you're looking for something compact, simple, budget friendly, and just something to get you through the workday or to or to easily travel with on flights or road trips, etc. So is this gonna be your kid's next gaming machine or your high-end video editing workstation? Not likely, but that's okay. It's just for general use, and you're probably gonna find it for under $200 Canadian, maybe less, in 2024 and onward. I know I wouldn't charge or purchase more than that personally. So I hope you enjoyed my brief review of the ThinkPad X270 laptop. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day and may you have good luck with your refurbished technology.